So we've introduced the idea of what is the survival function, um, what is the hazard, so this is the probability of dying in an instant given that you're alive, or we can think of it as being the rate of decrease on these curves, as well as the hazard ratio, right? the risk of dying in an instant for one group relative to the other, right? or exposed relative to unexposed. Um, so what we want to do is, while we're at this big picture level, think about what are the pros and cons of each of these different uh, models, the kaplan meier the exponential, the exponential and Cox proportional hazard model. Um, they'll be a bit abstract and they'll kind of flesh themselves out and, and we'll fill in the details as we talk about each of these models on their own. First, the idea of the kaplan meier model. One of the pros or nice things of it is it's simple. I mean, it's simple to interpret. Um, so most people, when they learn the kaplan meier model, they understand what it is. It's um, fairly intuitive and easy to look at and understand. Another nice thing about it is that you can estimate the survival. Okay. So you can estimate what's the probability of surviving beyond a certain time point. Some of the cons or some of the negatives that we'll see as we progress through this. The first is that there's no functional form. And what I mean by that is you can see this kind of blue set of steps here. There's no simple mathematical function that describes the shape of these. Okay. The only way to describe the set of steps is for us to tell, um, tell someone every time this steps down and how much it steps down. So we have to describe every single step on here in order to describe the, um, the kaplan meier survival function. Just to compare that, the exponential, if we use a negative exponential curve to describe this, the survival function, actually we're gonna see, is e to the negative hazard times t. Okay, so if we estimate the hazard or the rate of decrease of the survival function, that one parameter can describe the shape of the survival function. Okay, so this does have a functional form. Another con is you cannot estimate a hazard ratio. Okay. And again, let me try and explain why that is. Let's suppose we wanted to compare survival of two groups. So this is the exposed group, or x equals to 1. And we want to compare their survival to another group. This is x equals 0. So comparing survival for exposed to unexposed. We can see the way this, this function is defined is, for example, at this point here, between this time and this time, for this group, there is no hazard. Our function says there is no risk of dying between this time and this time. And then at this point, here's the hazard. It drops down. Right? So this is not having a constant rate of decrease. And so, for example, if we want to compare the hazard ratio, at this point in time, this group is dropping down. This group actually has no hazard. Um, I hope this is coming across clearly. But the idea is... There's not a constant or not a rate of decrease. It stays flat and it just decreases at certain points. So if we want to take a ratio of how much is it decreasing here to how much is this decreasing here, there is no decrease. Okay. When we try to take that ratio of hazards, the hazard is going to be zero at a lot of points in time. Okay. So it doesn't allow us to estimate a hazard ratio. And, and the kind of final con of this is it can only include a few, and they must be categorical x variables. Okay, so the kaplan meier model cannot incorporate numeric x variables. It, it can only handle categorical x's, and it can only handle a few categorical x's. Um, the kaplan meier model is the first model we're going to discuss. So as we go through and progress through that discussion, we'll see exactly uh, why it can't incorporate numeric variables and why it can only handle a few categories.
the exponential, these parametric, these nice smooth survival curves that we can fit. One of the nice things here is that we can estimate, oops, we can estimate the survival function and the hazard ratio. So we can um, get pretty much everything that we want. If we want to answer questions about how long someone's going to survive, we can use the exponential model or um, any parametric model. There's other ones we'll briefly mention. If we want to compare hazards of two groups, treatment A versus treatment B, or exposed versus unexposed, we can do that. So at first it seems like the exponential model gives us everything we want, but its biggest counter, its biggest limitation is that it's not always realistic. And what I mean by that, the exponential model, it assumes a constant hazard. So it assumes the rate of decrease of the skirt is constant. Now, when we're looking at um, humans and human populations, this is not a very realistic assumption. Right? What happens to our risk of dying, even without any illness, what happens to our risk of dying or our hazard as we age? It slowly increases. Right? As we get older, our risk of dying um, slowly increases. It's not constant. Right? So the exponential model does not allow for an aging okay, or hazards to decrease as time goes by. So that's the biggest limitation. There is uh, one more I'm going to add in here. There's something called a Weibull model, and this allows, so the Weibull model is still a parametric model, but it allows the hazard to increase proportionally with time. Or rather than increase, it can decrease proportionally with time. Okay, so this is a bit of an improvement in that it allows the hazard as time goes by to increase proportionally with time. So every time time increases one unit, the hazard is going to increase by a certain amount. Um, so that's getting a bit better, but it's still not always that realistic to have a hazard either constant or proportionally increasing with time. So let's think of a few examples of, of where these don't really fit. Again, if we're looking at risk of dying over life course, right, your hazard, it is probably not constant, and probably not continually increasing or continually decreasing. So I think when you're born as an infant, there's probably a higher risk of dying within the first few hours or first few days or few weeks or few months, right? At the beginning, the hazard is high, then it probably drops down once a baby gets to a um, kind of a lower risk age. And then the hazard gets lower and maybe hit your teenage years and your hazard starts to increase again, right? You're getting a more risky behavior and, and so on. And maybe in middle ages it, or you know, 30s, 40s, whenever, whenever you grow up, your hazard decreases a bit. And then as you get into older age, your hazard starts to increase as time goes by. Or we can imagine after, say, after risk of dying after some surgery. Immediately after the surgery, there might be a higher risk and the hazard might increase for a bit. And then you get to some critical point and the hazard starts to decrease. So the point I'm trying to make is hazards are quite often not constant or not proportionally increasing as time goes by or proportionally decreasing as time goes by. Okay, so comparing and contrasting these two, um, the parametric models kind of assume constant hazard or hazard that's continually increasing or decreasing in time. The Kaplan-Meier model, its hazard can kind of go up or down whenever it wants. Right? Again, we saw this. For this period of time, there is no hazard. Okay? It's not necessarily realistic, right? We know there's always some risk of dying, but the point is the hazard is flat, and then it has a, a drop here. It's flat, it has a bigger drop here. And again, the hazard could end up being huge here, right? There could end up being a huge risk of dying at a certain point in time. So the point is, 
For each parametric lens, the hazard is constant or proportional with time. The Kaplan-Meier model, the hazard can increase or decrease as time goes by, it can fluctuate a bit. So that leads us into cost proportional hazard model. The kind of biggest uh, pro of this is that the hazard can fluctuate with time. Meaning that the hazard can increase or decrease as time goes by. It can be quite large at some points, quite small at some points. So it kind of sort of captures um, what Kaplan Meyer does. Right? It allows the hazard to fluctuate as time goes by. But the nice thing with it is that you can estimate the hazard ratio. Okay. So um, it does allow you to estimate a hazard ratio. Kind of a negative of it is that you cannot estimate the survival function itself. Okay, we'll get into um, exactly why all those are as we progress through. But just what I wanted to briefly mention is the way Cox proportional hazard models semi-parametric, it's sort of a combination of these two. The red, like the exponential, these parametric need to have a um, nice smooth curve and either a constant rate of decrease for the curve or a rate of decrease that's increasing proportionally with time. Okay. Cost proportional hazard model would look sort of like this. It likes to fit a curve, but it's going to allow it, the hazard or the rate at which this decreases to bend a little bit and not be constant. Okay, so I sort of like to think of it as concept is trying to be sort of like the Kaplan-Meier model that can step down when it wants to, but be smooth and smooth out the shape of that Kaplan-Meier curve. That's uh, mathematically not quite correct, but that's the way I've, I've learned to think about it as I work through these ideas. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.